So the next tutorial or the next logo that we're going to create is the underground logo. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer and we'll call it underground template, logo template. And it is red and blue, so let's go ahead and change it to a blue. We'll go a dark blue and say OK. And then we're going to then import and place that underground logo on our second artboard. So we're going to go up to again file, place, and we're going to pick the underground logo. Because we had that layer selected, now you can see it is a dark blue. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make it just a little bit bigger. So hold the shift key, move your arrow to the corner. Again, you have to have the arrow selected. And you'll see it goes to a double sided slanted, slanted arrow and pull. And then let's just center it up just a little bit. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and make a new layer and we're going to call it my underground logo and it's a lighter blue so if that's too close to the blue color on the dark blue layer you can change it to like a cyan so I'm going to go ahead and change it to a cyan so it's more of a seafoam green so they're in the same family so I understand it's the same thing now there are different ways you can go about doing this but we're going to go ahead and use one method to show you and then you can also do other ways but this is just a simple way to do it so what we can do is we can first make and think about what shapes we want to use. So we do have a rectangle, which means we could use our rectangle shape and a circle. Now with the circle, in order to make it the exact same size, there's a trick with circles. If you have your rulers on, which you go to View, Rulers, or hit Command R to turn them on or to turn them off, if you have a circle and you click and hold and you bring a horizontal ruler to the top of the circle, and you drag from the left and you pull it over and you put it to the left or right edge of the circle. Then if you put a circle tool where these two meet, you can pull and create a circle the exact size you need. So remember the tools that have the little black triangle in the bottom right corner mean that they have tools behind them. So I'm going to click and hold and get the ellipse tool. So again, I'm going to think about what colors I want. I'm going to change it to where I don't need a stroke. Um, I do want a red circle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my eyedropper before I get started to select my colors. So I'm going to hit I for eyedropper, hit the red color, and I can create that as a new swatch by clicking, holding, and dragging. This is just one way you can make a new swatch. And I'm going to get the blue. And I'm going to click, hold, drag, and drop. So I could make it into a group, but I also know these are the ones that I have. So I'm going to have the red color selected next to the blue I just created. And I'm going to go ahead and make my circle by hitting my ellipse tool, which is the M. And I can go and get my ellipse tool, which is L. So if I hit the letter L, it should bring up my ellipse tool. So I'm going to line up the vertical lines of the plus sign with the vertical lines of the ruler and the horizontal lines of the plus sign with the horizontal ruler. So I'm going to click hold and then I'm going to drag and now you can see you can create a circle the exact size that you need. Now I do know that I need a circle within that circle that's a little bit smaller and white. So I could have done that one first. So what I can do is I'm going to move my red circle as my dogs freak out. So I'm going to click and hold on the top ruler and bring it to the top of the white circle. Click and hold on the left and bring it over to the left side of the white circle. And again, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change it from red to white, or you can say none. But if I do none, then it's going to see through and I'm going to, it's going to change the one I have selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it and say white because it's always white on the underground. It's not see-through and you see a color of teal behind it or things like that. So it is a white circle. So I've picked the color white with no stroke. I'm going to get my ellipse tool and line up the horizontal and vertical lines with the plus sign. Click, hold, and drag. And now I have my white circle. So now I'm going to use my move arrow. You can hit the letter V to get the move arrow. I'm going to move my red circle and line it up with the red circle. So now I have my red and white circle and I can turn off the underground template layer and I can see what I have designed and what I have left to design. 
So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the marquee tool. And we do know it needs to be the blue, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I don't have any of the other shapes selected, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick and change it to blue. So let me click off. So now I'm going to change it to blue, so it doesn't change my circle. It changed my circle because it was selected. So now I'm going to get my rectangle marquee tool, line the horizontal and vertical lines up, click, hold, and drag, and now I have my blue bar. Now what I need to do next is I need to adjust my text for it. Now if you ever have it where like your horizontal bar is behind the circles, what that means is you have it arranged wrong. So if you go up to Object Arrange, you can see you can bring items forward or backward. Forward means it would go forward one item, or backward it would go backward one item. It would go backward one item. So if I say send backward, it would go behind the white circle. However, if I hit Command Z to undo, you'll see if I go up to Object Arrange, Whatever item I have selected, and you can tell because it has the bounding box around it with the color, if I go to Object Arrange Send to Back, it'll go all the way to the back. So likewise, if I go Object Arrange Bring to Front, it'll go all the way to the front. So that is how you can adjust the arrangement and order of items on top of each other in Illustrator if you don't put each shape and item on a different layer. So that arranges a little bit easier than having tons and tons of extra layers for each logo. So I just said save. It's that same font that I had issues with for the frost. Alright, so now we know the underground is a sans serif. A little bit bold, so not super skinny. And it's in a solid white. So we need to find that font. So let's get our text tool, T for text. And then we're going to go ahead and change our font to a white. And we're going to click, and you can click up at the top, or you can click in your character palette. I'm going to click up here, and I'm going to say, let's look for a sans serif font. Now, if you click at the top, you'll notice you'll not see the change. However, if you go to your character palette, you can actually see what the font looks like, which is advantageous. So again, if you don't see your character window or palette, you can go up to Window, type because it's a type or a font and go to character. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find a sans serif that is a little bit bold. So some of the fonts you'll see I have a lot more than you to choose from because I download lots of fonts. This is not quite bold. There is no thick to thin ratio on the underground so we need to make sure the sans serif has no thick to thin ratio. I'm going to try impact would probably be too big and bold but let's try it and just see what it looks like. Now you'll notice that if you use your type tool you can see that there is a cursor with a square which means the type would just be on its own layer and we, or its own item and we can move it independently. Whereas if I move the type tool where it's on the line of the rectangle it would be typing inside the rectangle and I don't want that. I want to be able to move the text independently so I'm going to type underground which I am not going to see because it's in all white so I'm going to type underground all caps so it's showing me okay it looks like it went in black so I can just change it white I'm going to adjust my tracking back to normal so I can say from 630 from the one we use for the front the frost, I'm going to change it back to zero, and I'm going to use my move arrow and move it over my underground. Now if you need to move minor changes, you can always move up or down with your arrow keys when you have the text selected. And it looks like it does need a little bit of positive tracking to make it a little bit more legible, so I'm going to say, let's try 25. And then I'm going to use the arrow key to move it over, so then it fits within the box a little bit better. And then I'm going to save it. It's going to give me the same message because I'm using a font um, that I don't have. So you'll see that now if I turn off the layer, we can see that we made the underground. Yes, their font is a little bit different than ours, um, but this one is fine. Um, but when you do work with a client, you do want to make sure you utilize the font that they use for their logo. Um, now, if you ever want to click through an item to another item to select it and you can't select it, you can always hold the... option key, but you can see I can select all the items I need because they're a little bit separated from each other. So I'm going to save it. Now if you have something where you like it 
and it looks good and you want it to stay the same way it is and everything stay together, you can actually group these items. So if you use your move tool and click and hold and draw an imaginary box around all the items, you can see it's kind of selecting all the items on my underground. Then I can go up to object and group or command G and now when I move it all these items will move together and they're not independent. But if I ever need to go back and adjust them, I can go up to object, ungroup, and then I can click on things individually and adjust them and move them. However, it is nice if you are going to use maybe the underground and then shrink it and put it on a poster to link all these items together. Now, I want them to be unlinked, but I want you to under or ungrouped, but I want you to understand the benefits of grouping and ungrouping. So, grouping puts them all together in one uh, click and you can move them all at one time. Um, you can also do that simply though by drawing around it and clicking and holding and moving. So it just depends. Um, but now you have designed the underground logo.